You're on the Bible Forum. We're in the midst of uh, COVID-19. I think personally that it's on the wane. Uh, it'll probably make a revisit uh, in the fall when weather changes again. But as we go through the summer months, we're not going to probably hear so much about it. But I want to talk to you about the, the result of COVID choices. First of all, according to a study that was just released by the National Bureau of Economic Research, more than 100,000 U.S. businesses have already permanently shut down. This represents millions of jobs that are never coming back. And secondly, the Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta is now projecting that the United States GDP is going to shrink by 42.8% during the second quarter. That's April, May, and June. We are over halfway through that. The bank describes the data as a now cast or something that is being done in real time compared with official government reports of GDP which are projected forward and therefore are dated. The first quarter preliminary data showed a 4.8 percent dip. Thirdly, on Friday last week, we learned that U.S. retail sales were down 16.4% during the month of April, which is a new all-time record low. Number four, U.S. factory output was down 13.7% last month, the worst number ever recorded for that category. Number five, U.S. industrial production fell 11.2% last month representing the worst number in over a hundred years. Number six, last Thursday, we learned that the number of Americans filing initial claims for unemployment benefits during this pandemic has risen by another 2.9 million, bringing the grand total for this entire crisis to an estimated 36.5 million people. To put that number in perspective, this is probably the same percentage as that of the Great Depression of the 1930s. Given the increase in population. According to the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago, the real rate of unemployment in the U.S. is now 30.7%. Number seven, according to a federal survey just conducted, almost 40% of Americans with a household income of less than $40,000 a year say they have lost a job during this crisis. One study has concluded that 42% of the job losses during this pandemic will end up being permanent. Employers learning they don't need these people. Number eight, according to a professor of economics at Columbia University, the U.S. homeless population could rise by up to 45% by the end of this calendar year. At that point, things will be so bad that even Fed Chair Jerome Power is openly admitting that he doesn't really know how long this new economic downturn is going to last. So, the question becomes, will this economy recover? Will we get through this? The obvious answer is yes, but it comes with a caveat. Yes, at least in one way or another. The Fed chair says it may take a while. It could stretch through the end of next year. According to him, we just don't know. So what are we going to look for? Well, they tell us to look for the commercial real estate market, restaurants, offices, hotels, spas, and so forth. Things classified non-essential. 
These anticipate tremendous vacancies. This is single-handedly sending the commercial property market into chaos. Estimates are that up to 25% of all commercial mortgage-backed securities could be on the verge of default. As this unfolds, it will send shockwaves throughout the financial market. Bankruptcy lawyers are the ones who are going to have a lot of work. Last week, we learned that J.C. Penney filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. And, of course, the bankruptcies that we have seen so far will just be the tip of the iceberg. Now keep in mind J.C. Penney has been in trouble for the last several years. This particular financial decline just simply sealed their coffin. It may be that politicians are all over America are going to deeply regret reacting so dramatically to COVID-19 because nobody's going to be able to put the pieces back together now that our economic bubble has burst. Sadly, very few people understood how shaky our debt-fueled economic boom was, and ultimately it didn't take that much to push us into a new economic depression. And now every additional crisis that comes along is just going to escalate our economic troubles. This is going to be one very long nightmare, and there will be no waking up from it anytime soon, the experts are telling us. Even before COVID-19 came along, however, homelessness had become a massive problem in many of our major cities, and now tent cities are rapidly multiplying in size. I would add that this was deliberate. In these major cities, which are run by ultra-liberal mayors and committees and so forth, they are the ones who allowed this to happen, and it was purposeful. Not that they wanted to punish these people, but they didn't want to do what they had to do to fix it. There's going to be so much economic pain, they tell us, in the months ahead. And it could all have been avoided if we had made much different choices as a nation. But we didn't. And so now we all get to pay the price. These people get elected. They create the problem we got to pay for it. So why didn't they make the necessary choices? Well, the answer is, answer is simple. It's twofold. On the one hand, it's politics. You don't get elected by doing the right thing. And then there's money. Liberals are dependent upon poor people. Poor people tend to be less educated, less sophisticated in terms of economics and social structures. Liberals need such people to keep them in power. And then they need such people to get federal subsidies to take care of them. If these liberals in cities actually worked to get their people up and out of poverty, they'd lose their voting base. And they know it. That's how evil they are.